hello everyone welcome back to my channel in this video i'll be explaining you about one of the most important topics in uh, fluid mechanics that is uh, continuity equation so we have continuity equation in one dimension two dimension and three dimension so right now in this video i'll be discussing about continuity equation in one dimension in my next video i'll be discussing continuity equation in two dimension and three dimension okay so uh, continuity equation is basically uh, what you call based on the principle of law of conservation of mass i think you all know what is law of conservation of mass so the mass inflow must be equal to the mass outflow okay so we have uh, some important uh, equations in fluid mechanics like uh, continuity equation uh, which is based on law of conservation of mass and you have uh, bernoulli's equation which is based on law of conservation of energy uh, like that uh, next you have Uh, momentum equation which is based on law of conservation of momentum so like this you have some important equations which are based on some important principles that you need to remember okay so for competitive exam point of view you have to remember this continuity equation is based on law of conservation of mass so what does this law of conservation of mass tells you i have told you so whatever the mass of fluid flowing into a section per second will be equal to the mass of the fluid coming out of that Uh, coming out of the another section per second will be the same so whatever mass is entering inside will be equal to the mass coming outside okay so we have two sections according to this figure you have section 1 and section 2 uh, this is the direction of flow so water or any liquid is flowing from left to right so uh, according to our law of conservation of mass whatever the fluid is entering through section 1 should be equal to the quantity of fluid or mass of the fluid which is leaving out to section 2 okay so now uh, i'll consider two sections 1 and 2 so v1 is the velocity of flow at section 1 rho1 is the density of the fluid at section 1 and a1 is the area of cross section of the pipe at section 1 similarly your v2 rho2 and a2 are the corresponding values at section 2 so therefore the rate of flow or the mass of the fluid flowing per second through section 1 will be equal to rho1 a1 v1 this formula uh, comes from we have that formula for density as mass by volume so from there uh, mass will be equal to density into volume and uh, i am writing mass per second so divide with second on both side so mass per second will be equal to density into volume per second so i'll make you understand see here we have density as mass by volume correct so from here mass can be written as density into volume so i'll divide both sides with seconds okay divide by second on both sides so what will happen now so mass per second will be equal to rho into volume okay per second so now this mass per second will be equal to rho into i'll write volume as area into length or area into one of the dimension can be written as volume per second correct so this is mass per second is equals to rho into area is capital a into length per second so length or any displacement with respect to second will give you velocity so like this you got the formula rho av that's what i have written here which is rho1 a1 v1 so rho1 a1 v1 means mass of the fluid entering the section per second similarly mass of the fluid leaving the section per second will be equal to obviously rho2 a2 v2 but what we told our continuity equation is based on law of conservation of mass so according to this law mass entering should be equal to mass leaving so rho1 a1 v1 should be equal to rho2 a2 v2 this is called as continuity equation and uh, this continuity equation is applicable for both compressible and incompressible flows you know what's a compressible flow right compressible flow means the density of the fluid will not be constant it will be varying so there is rho1 and rho2 so density is changing so you can use this formula so basically this equation number 1 is called as continuity equation S say if the fluid is incompressible means if the density of the fluid is not changing from section 1 to section 2 then your rho1 will become equal to rho2 then our equation will reduce to a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 this is our second continuity equation so mostly in fluid mechanics problems we assume the fluid to be incompressible hence we adopt this equation a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 but uh, when it comes to competitive exam point of view if they ask you what is continuity equation and if they give you uh, this formula in the multiple choice then you have to 
give a tick for this only why because this is the basic raw equation from which we are trying to customize it with the incompressible fluid so these two equations you have to remember clear now let's solve the problem related to continuity equation in one dimension so the diameters of a pipe at sections 1 and 2 are 10 cm and 15 cm respectively find the discharge through the pipe if the velocity of water flowing through the pipe at section 1 is 5 m per second determine the velocity at section 2 so he is telling that we have two sections so I'll, I'll try to draw the same diagram okay so I have section 1 1 and I have section 2 2 okay section 1 1 I have taken at the inlet and section 2 2 I have taken at the outlet and he's giving the values of uh, thing uh, parameters at section 1 and section 2 let's try to write what are the values given to us so let me write the first given data right let's see the given data first he is telling us diameter at section 1 is 10 centimeters so d1 d1 is equal to 10 centimeters so you have to convert this into meters so it's 10 by 100 0 0.1 meters next diameter at section 2 is given as 15 centimeters so this is again 15 by 100 so 0.15 meters okay next uh, find the discharge uh, at section okay through the pipe if uh, velocity at section 1 is 5 so velocity at section 1 is given to us which is v1 which is 5 meter per second the thing what we need to calculate is he's also asking us what is v2 and also he's asking us to calculate q okay so uh, this is very easy way to calculate q why because q is discharge formula which i have shown you just now you can use a1 v1 or a2 v2 anything means the same okay so discharge formula is generally given by q equal to a into v so either you can do a1 v1 or you can do a2 v2 both of them will give you the same answer so i can directly start off calculation for q once i calculate a1 and a2 so first let me calculate the values of a1 so a1 is given by pi by 4 of d1 square which is pi by 4 of d1 is 0 0.1 whole square next a2 will be pi by 4 into d2 square which is equal to pi by 4 into d2 is 0 0.15 square all right i am calculating the value of uh, a1 which is 0 0.1 square by 4 pi by 4 d square yeah it is 7.85 into 10 power minus 3 meter square Similarly, let me calculate for A2. Right, it is 0 0.0176 meter square. So, I am done with calculation of A1, A2. Now, I can calculate uh, directly Q. So, discharge Q is equals to A1 into V1. This is the formula. So, A1 is 7.85 into 10 power minus 3 into v1 is already given to us in the question which is 5 so let me see how much i'll get the value so 5 into 7.85 into 10 power minus 3 right it is 0 0.03925 meter cube per second you have a conversion 1 meter cube per second is equals to 1000 liters so you can write this in liters also just multiply the answer with 1000 it will be 39.25 liter per second. I am writing the conversion here since 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters. This is the standard conversion of discharge right from meter cube to liters. So obviously from here 1 liter will be 1 by 1000 meter cube. So our one of the unknown is done. We have calculated the discharge but he is also asking us to calculate the velocity section too. Then obviously we have to adopt continuity equation. So from continuity equation what was that we derived a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 here nothing given to compressibility is given like uh, densities are changing hence i am not using that row 1 a1 v1 and row 2 a2 v2 i am directly using a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 so what's the only unknown for me v2 so from here what will be v2 equal to a1 v1 by a2 so just i'll substitute all the values a1 is 7.85 into 10 power minus 3 into what is v1 for me 5 by what is a2 
zero point zero one seven six. Already this we calculated, which is nothing but um, thirty nine point. Sorry, okay, that's in liters I'll get. So what I'll do is I'll try to write in now zero point zero three nine two five by zero point zero one seven six. So let's calculate what is the value of V two now. So zero point zero three nine two five. Zero point zero one seven six, right? It's two point two three meter per second. So this is the second unknown. What we need to calculate. We are done with calculation of discharge. We are done with calculation of V two. Still, if you have a doubt, you can also calculate uh, Q through A two V two. A two was already for us zero point zero one seven six into what V two we got two point two three. So see here, you got again zero point zero three two nine. 0.039, which is almost the same. So like this, you have to solve the problem, and this is a very basic model problem related to discharge. But um, we don't expect such problems in exam point of view. But this may be useful for a uh, competitive exam point of view. But when coming to final exams, this will not be useful. We have more number of problems related to discharge where we have branching of pipes and so on. one big pipe will be divided into two pipes and there you need to calculate the discharge and unknown quantities so that sort of problems which are especially for a final exam point of view i'll be covering in the next coming videos okay so do watch and um, go through the notes click on the description of this video you have a link to download the notes download and read okay thank you